What is going on beautiful people and welcome back to another MD Fish Tanks build video. So today we're going to be building an upgraded tank for my turtle Timmy. Timmy! Well to be honest you could stay in the aquarium for longer but the problem is is that turtles produce quite a lot of waste. Now in a small volume of water it's going to cause the tank to get dirty and grimy very quickly. As you can see I mean I'm cleaning it very regularly now and it gets dirty very quick because of the amount of poop the turtles produce. So what we need to do is upgrade his tank double the water volume, nice big land area for him to go in, should be awesome. So yeah, here is Timmy's current tank. He's been in here for a good while now. Now turtles don't actually like really deep water, they prefer sort of distance to travel in, so it's been absolutely fine in this tank, but it's definitely time for an upgrade. Look at you now. Look at you, big boy, eh? He's <laughs> still a tiddler. But yeah, that's his current tank, but we're gonna be moving him to this big tank here so you can see against my hand this is three foot long two high and two in depth i think something like that i'll put it all up on screen and above it I've just got one of my nice cheap lights it's the same ones that i have sort of dotted around the studio and all the other different uh, tanks as well so for instance the discus tank here as well which is doing great look at that plant growth that's just the same lights so i've got two of them though on that one we have also got a little canister filter, comes down here and sits underneath. It's all not connected or anything at the moment that we can sort that all out later on. First of all though, I wanna get some depth to this bad boy. I need to build it right up and to do that, I'm gonna use coarse gravel. We don't want fine gravel because if you've got too fine gravel in there, Timmy could swallow bits, could get stuck inside him. I mean, turtles are pretty good. I mean, they work out straight away. It's not edible and spit it out, but it could happen. So big coarse gravel, build up a bank of it. And then I've got these awesome stones down here to put in. This is rhino stone. The stuff looks so naturalistic and yeah, it's gonna look great. So there's a good pile there creating some good height you can see from the side but the problem is i've just had a thought why am i doing it in that corner tapering down i should switch it around shouldn't i because most of the time oh look there i am <laughs> i'm sat here at my desk looking that way and you know it's not the most nice to look at sort of edge is it so if i shift it all that side and have it all open more in this area so for the swim area to come sort of like that and then pile it all up at the back there you'll see in a second anyway Right, I think that's a really good shape. It's given us a great platform to start with as well. And if you look, it means the water level can come up to almost halfway of the tank, which means we've got way more than double than before. Uh, remember, Timmy's about this big in here, so he's gonna have loads to swim in. And to be honest, as he grows, we can adapt and change, but you know, he grows very slowly, so there's a lot of time. Right, next up, I want us to use more of these stones in the foreground, just to sort of bring it out more and cover up some of these sort of stony areas and some of the gaps as well, because turtles like to get in everywhere. <laughs> They're very mischievous. Oh, I'm really liking that so far. I can adjust as I go, but now I want to lay on the sand that's going all over this area. We want a nice light sand. It will just look really good against this rhino stone. Most of it will sort of go between these cracks and I'll cover it up a little bit. Stuff's going to get knocked out by the turtle and brought forward, but it doesn't matter. That'll all add to the realism with this one because look at that. It's so good, didn't it? <laughs>
really, really good start there. Next job, fill up that back area, look at that. So we need to fill all this up with coarse gravel and then I can actually use it to put like plants in at the top that will just take some water from the water level and sort of draw it upwards because then we can put mosses on and plants into that whole section. I've done this before and it worked really, really well. So I'm gonna try and do it again. Oh, actually, do you know what? I've just had a thought. Why don't I put the wood that I'm gonna be using first um, all over the top of these rocks and then I can pull the stones in behind that and it should lock everything in place. Yeah, let's do that. Okay, there we go, looking pretty good. Well, it doesn't look pretty good. It looks cack at the moment, don't worry. It always looks rubbish at this stage, but it won't do by the time we've finished. So we've got this bit of wood at the top, they're acting like a bit of a tree trunk, and then some root systems going over the edge. Now, some turtles try and climb, so just see what your turtles like first, the temperament. Timmy does not climb, he doesn't climb anything. People who watch the channel will be aware of this as well. He could have climbed out of places so many times. He doesn't even get out to bask. He's such a lazy turtle. But yeah, I've also pulled it away slightly from the glass as well, so like he's not actually right near the glass. So if he does climb up, he can just fall down, <laughs> which he won't do because he doesn't do that. Anyway, now we need to fill up the top area with stones coming right up level uh, with where the water line is gonna be. So I've filled in the areas about three quarters of the way up and then I've left a pocket on that side and a pocket on that side and all in behind all of this wood as well to fill up with aqua soil. Now the reason I'm doing this is because then when the water goes on that level it stays all moist that means we can plant immersed plants into it and lay mosses on the top. So immersed plants are what I've got here down below look this is my plant storage tank and you can see that I've got a little wet layer of water so the roots are submerged but all the plant life is above water. Now these are in a really humid environment, obviously, because I've got the, the lid on, so not all of them will work, but I can try a few. I know Hydrocall um, Japan, this one here, I know this one works um, out of water and out of humid environment once it adapts, so we'll give that a try. Crips really don't tend to work well at all doing that. I don't think the Bulbitus or the Java ferns will either, so <laughs> we haven't got a lot to choose from, but we can make it work. And we can also use certain houseplants as well. Many of you know I have great success with peace lilies before, so that might be an option. So yeah, next job is just filling up these sections and behind with Aquasol. I can even take that out actually to make this easier. I think we've got that looking really really good but I need to now fill the water level up to where we want it to be because that will determine how I progress next. The reason being is because I need to lay the mosses on the top area and just see how the water's going to travel throughout the wood and that kind of things because the wood actually soaks up water which means that we can put moss on top of it as well but to what level I don't know yet so just get the water in and then we can find out where we're sitting. Right, doing well. So that piece of wood floated up, that's all right. This back piece is trying to as well. That should sink on its own. But if we look to the back section here, which was the point of actually filling up with water, you can see that the water level's just with the aqua soil now, which is just what we want. So there's moisture in the soil, but it isn't like underwater. This side is underwater. So I'll just fill that in with more soil and it'll just stay like that on the top absolutely perfect it means we can plant into it like with regular plants that don't they that, you know plants that don't mind a lot of water but can't be submerged see I'm gonna put this one back there and put a rock on it so it stays underwater that way it will just stay sunk on its own after a few days and then top up that back section with soil as well and some more over that side and in this gap basically the more areas I've got around here that are out of water but wet the more options we've got with terrestrial plants. And for this scape to look amazing, we need a lot going on on the top, I think, anyway. Right, the soil is now up to the level we want on that side. I've added some in the middle there and more at the back. So we've got loads of soil to plant into, but the problem is 
<laughs> uh, some of the soil was wet and I just basically poured liquid soil into the tank. Doesn't matter, it'll clear quickly once we've got a filter on and that's the job we need to do next. So here's the inlet and outlet that was on there previously. The uh, filter is down here unplugged, bits of wood. I'm sorting out the cabling and everything as well as we go, but it will run basically all the way up here along the back. I'm going to have it going in this side. Now the problem is the spray bar is designed to just loop over the top and then just go in a little bit. So what I'm going to do is cut it here and extend it with a piece of tubing. Not that green stuff, I've got some darker stuff. And that will just bring it then so it sits down low enough in this water because I want to have a good spray bar going all the way across. We'll get really good flow then and hopefully massive success with the tank. Well, that went better than I'd hoped, so let's prime it and get it going. Sometimes if you do this, by the way, when you try and prime, it might take a while. You might actually have to use your mouth to siphon it rather than like the auto or the pumping priming system. It can sometimes struggle, but hopefully the water level's high enough in this that it doesn't matter. We'll give it a go. No, no good. There's no sort of vacuum, so just use your mouth and the old-fashioned way, suck it through. There we go. Air is coming in, water's coming in. I didn't actually have to suck it. I pulled it out straight, so there was less kinks in the pipe. Gave it a couple more pumps, and it actually worked. Thank goodness, because that saved me getting a mouthful of water, which would have inevitably happened. I've done it so many times. So what's happening is water is going in the inlet, it's filling up the chamber and the chamber's got to push the air out of the outlet. So once the air stops coming out, you know you're ready to just switch it on and it should work straight away. In the world, like everything is. Yay, we're working, albeit very slow. It should pick up speed as time goes by, more air gets replaced. Basically, there'll be a load of air around the impeller, which means it doesn't run efficiently. But once that air's passed, it's just pure water just getting pushed out. I mean, that's pretty pathetic at the moment, isn't it? Oh no, oh no, it's doing very well. Yeah, we've got good flow, ideal. So you can see that uh, quite a lot of the water level's gone down because it's gone into the canister, so we need to refill that again. Um, we should get nice, clean sort of water in no time, fingers crossed. Oh, and a quick tip for you guys, if you've got Aquasaw and your sand and it's like really bugging you, you don't have to sort of hook it out one by one. Find a magnet. I like to use, say this, this will be the cleaner for the, um, you know, for the, glass now in the soil there is iron which means it's magnetized so it should be pulled up by this So it has now been 24 hours since we filled up the tank. It's super, super clear and looking really good. Now for the next stage, I'm gonna plant under the water level first. Let's just get that whole underwater world a little bit more green and interesting. Not too much though, just gonna go for sort of epiphyte plants, so stuff that crams into rocks. Any big gaps, I'm gonna stick a load of Anubius in there, maybe some Java ferns as well, because it will close those areas and stop Timmy just going in there and getting stuck, because otherwise that's what he will do. <laughs> After we've done that, we can then move on to the top section, but I just wanna get that bottom area done first. So as many of you who watch my vlogs will know, I keep all my Anubius out in little bowls like this, just a bit of water, and then the ambient lighting, or this, in this case, there's a light right there and a light above it as well. But yeah, it just continues to grow. You don't get any algae and you can use it whenever you want and it just looks great straight away. So for instance, look at that piece. Look at that, lovely. That would go nicely in the tank.
Right, there we are. I've stuck loads of Anubias in just to add interest in certain areas. I've kept this area a little bit more bare because it's a lot more shaded and I've got a feeling Timmy's gonna be sort of hanging on that back rock there. Could be wrong, could be wrong, but you might do. Um, and also I can bring some more Anubias into the foreground here because some of them are attached to rocks. Because some of them are attached to rocks like that, you see, and you can just sit it in the water like this. Boop. <laughs> you can just sit there. <laughs> a few more of those will look really good, I think, in the foreground, but not too much. Um, I think I'm going to leave it anubius, to be honest, because there's going to be so much going on above the water. We want to keep it quite sort of, I don't know, simple looking. I think it works really well when you've got a simple looking underwater section and then a really, you know, high vegeta vegetation, would that be the word? High planted area on top. I don't know. We'll see in a minute. <laughs> So that is the whole bottom section taken care of and now it's time to start planting on the top. Now I've used a few plants in some of my other setups that have worked really well, so I'm going to give them a go again. So in my better fish tank you can see here we've got some mosses that are sat on top of the aqua soil, we've got some really nice fern, it's all doing well so we've got those choices of plants straight away. And as many of you will know on top of the Amazon tank, Amazon 2, we've got um, piece of lilies and we've got a monstera as well somewhere in amongst it but yeah they work really well in water too so well in fact you don't even need to plant them in the soil you can just put them in the water column but I'm thinking that ferns will work really well in this setup I have got a spare piece of lily but I don't have any ferns so why don't we say we go to the garden center and buy some okay so we're at the garden center and there's an absolute ton of different ferns here look but I just want to go for the normal sort of style normal is that the right way like this look I love these kind of ferns the most, they're like, I don't know what it is, I just prefer them. I mean, I do like the finer ones as well, but I think for this setup, I'm going to go for these bigger leafed ones, but these are two sort of bit, oh, I'd like to have all of them, how good would that look? But you know, we're limited by space, so I think this one will work well, just this little one. Oh, that's a big one as well, I'll use that one behind it, so those two. So we've got the, <laughs> so we've got the ferns. Uh, the next job is to take them out, wash off most of the soil so we can take the roots and put them into our aqua soil. They'll be wet, they'll grow, done it before, should work. <laughs> Oh yes, that is looking awesome. Do you know what? I think I'm gonna leave it with just the ferns. I think that looks so naturalistic. I was gonna see dot bits of um, you know mosses and things all over the rocks there, but I quite like the character they're giving and the sort of contrasting colors and that. I think that's working well. If I just stick a load of moss in, it's gonna be like a green bomb, um, but I'm loving the wood. I'm loving that natural look. So look at this, you're up in the top section. Oh, by the way, I brought the water level up to a good area where Timmy will be able to actually use this stick here. You have to think about these things before you make a turtle tank. So as I was making it, I knew I wanted a stick coming away from all of the plants that I can then place the heat lamp on this side and be about here. So hopefully he'll be able to either come the back end here, look, so you can come la 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 up the top, or you can come this side. Now it's Timmy, he doesn't really bask, so he's probably not gonna do it at all, but the option is there. Maybe this setup makes him feel more at home and he will use it, it'll be so cool to see if he does. But anyway, I've decided I do want a few more plants underneath. I think it's gonna be good just to add even more Anubias dotted around, a bit more, um, you know, to look at, a bit more interest under there, but I'm gonna place them on rocks like that one, so if I need to take them out at any point, give them a wipe off or something, then I can. See what I'm doing here is preempting waste because uh, Timmy produces a lot of waste, so the leaves will get kind of algified, so we can clean it all up a lot easier. That's why I'm going to put them on the rocks.
I don't know about you, but for me, that is looking so good so far. I know I've kept things very simple under the water, but like I say, it's for a reason. But next up, I wanna add some more detail to that immersed part of the setup. Just some more finer details. Um, I've got some Monte Carlo that's been grown out of water, and it will just sit nicely in one, some of the pockets there. Hopefully it will sort of carpet on top of the wood and the rocks there, and just creep everywhere. That looks so good. Yeah, as you can see, oh, you can't see, hang on. Yeah, as you can see here, this is one of my plant storage tanks. This is the Monte Carlo. This is HC Cuba, and that's Glosso Stigma. Those will not work. Actually, the HC might work, but I'm, I'm just, I've got plenty of Monte Carlo here. Deliberately ordered more because I knew I was going to be doing this. I'm just going to take a few pots, cut them up into like half, and then keep the rock wall on and just poke them in holes. Yeah, looking sweet. It's those extra little details, you know, and there's plenty of moisture now going to those root systems, so we should be fine. It should grow like crazy, fingers crossed. It might take a little sort of time to convert because it's been in a high humidity environment because obviously I've sealed the top of this tank off with, and there's a couple of holes each side for circulation, but it's pretty moist in there. But yeah, like I say, for to start with, I'm just gonna keep spraying it down each day, or a couple of times a day even, just to try and get it sort of adapting to different conditions, and then it should take off, fingers crossed. Oh, we are looking so, so sweet. Right, we're ready. It's time to add in the fish first, and then we'll put Timmy in afterwards. Right, I've got our fish, including the little baby one. It's time to release the fish. Oh, sorry, that was very dark. <laughs> Let's just put the fish in nicely. Oh yeah, there's something about these fish. I don't know what it is. I do really like them. Very underrated fish in my opinion. They do look so good against tanks that are just gray, um, that sand, and green from the plants. You know, just very basic sort of colors. They seem to just make it look even more natural. Now these are white cloud mountain minnows, the golden variety. You can get them in grays as well. Maybe, maybe I should add some of those. I don't know, or maybe I should just add more of these. Again, something for later on. But at the moment, this is a really good start to the tank. Now remember, this aquarium has been had a filter running on it for a long time, so I'm actually all cycled and everything. But just to be sure, I'm going to add in some beneficial bacteria. If you guys have got a new setup, now is the time to add it. Don't add it the day before, thinking you're sort of seeding it. Add it the same time as you add the fish. If you add it the day before, all that seems to happen is the water clouds overnight because the bacteria dies off. But if you add it now, it's perfect timing. Right, we're ready to go. Let's add Timmy. So we've got Timmy. He's currently trying to get off my hand. Now with turtles though, it's important to place them out of the water initially and let them go in at their own time. It's quite scratchy at the moment, so he might go straight in. Let's have a look, see what he does. Oh, straight in. There we go. Now the reason that is, is he needs to take a breath before he goes underwater. But to be honest, he'll be absolutely fine there because he jumped in. He jumped in quick, but I'm pretty sure he's fine. He'll go straight to the surface otherwise. Pretty calm. Ideal. Seems to be enjoying it so far. Okay, so now that he's in, we can't just leave it at that. We need to, you know, give him the requirements that he needs. And one of those requirements is a UVA, UVB bulb. I've got one that's built in together. It does heat, UV, the lot, all of it. It's, it's not cheap at all. It's an expensive bulb, but it's required. Timmy, are you all right there? Right, we'll come back to you in a minute. He's a bit freaked out, I guess. I mean, look, he's gone from that tiny little tank to this massive space. Look at the size of him in there. <laughs> look, there he, he just looks like a little rock down the bottom. He'll try and hide for a bit. 
it's just natural for them to want to do that he'll just find a little crevice somewhere and just stay in there for the time being but that's fine we'll just give him time he can come out at his own pace then yeah i deliberately set the tank up so i could put the bulb here and have it aiming down on this log to try and tempt him out onto there and also so that it doesn't cook any of the plants the plants are going to be nowhere near it so it should be good Oh, there we go, just like I said, right down there. So if I feel, oh, there's a lot of good heat coming on this area now, but there's not a lot that, yeah, it's literally, I've, I've absolutely nailed it where I wanted the heat to be. So that is absolutely perfect. Timmy, how are you doing? You chilled out yet? No, oh, this is what he'll do. So he has found, look, a little spot right underneath there. Can you see his head? Hey buddy, I can see you. So you'll just find little areas that will get chilled out in. Now. I'll keep coming in here like every day and being like, where the hell is Timmy? And I'm going to be really worried for a little bit. But that's the good thing. There's no way he can get out of here. Like even if he climbs that log, it's pulled forwards off the glass. So he'd have to jump and he, he can't jump. So we're all good. Oh, but look at that. The fish completely complement the scape. I'm so, so pleased with how it's all turned out. The naturalness of it. Oh, it's so, so good. <laughs> I don't lie, I really miss you 